Hello everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I'm excited to show you this game from the War of the Ring 2023 World Tournament. We are in the top eight. I am playing against Sunny L, and because they're higher seed than me from the earlier rounds, they get to decide which side they will play first. They chose to play free people first. Let's jump in. So I allocated one eye and rolled none. There was an error with the roll where it didn't actually get allocated, so the rightmost die, which happened to be this one, gets allocated. So uh, this is obviously an excellent roll for me. They got two movement, which is fine for them, um, but no playable cards. They didn't get any Palantirs, so that's all right. It is nice to see Athalos early because it's very likely you can play it while Strider is guide. So they start off by moving. And I miss them, and then I get Isengard to war, they pass, and I do the fairly standard opening moves of, okay, I wait to see. So I moved Bardur to Gorgoroth. I'm leaving my army movements to be a little more flexible in case I decide to relocate somewhere, depending on what uh, muster cards they play, if any. All right, they pass again. I move uh, Gorgoroth to Morinon, and now I have a full stack of units in Morinon. And my plan is just to march these armies up north and take over Dew and attack Lorien and then find my final three victory points wherever the opportunity arises, possibly through Corsairs, possibly through taking out Rohan. A fairly standard opening plan. They use their army movement to block Old Forest Road and Westhamnet and move Edoras to Westhamnet. Obviously, these are useful moves. Uh, the move to Old Forest Road is more useful if you have scouts and also if Shadow has an army movement that would allow them to move, move in there. And actually, it could be possible this round where... Actually, not this round, because I need one of these dice to get Saruman and another die to muster uh, Mordor to war. So I, I couldn't actually go in this round, but if they anticipate Dol Guldur straight to Old Forest Road, it could be useful. Anyway, I move my armies as expected, North Dunland to Moria, Morinon to Daggerlad. They move the Fellowship a second time. I miss again. Uh, they get Saruman. And now maybe they're going to give me a ring. They do give me a ring. So that's interesting. I think the fellowship is moving smoothly enough that it's worth it to them to try and kill off Gandalf now. If I hit them, which is a 50% chance, they can rely. It's a good chance they'll be able to kill off Gandalf. And then with the Will of the West next round, bring him back turn two, which is nice. It does give me a ring right away. And... I guess they don't they don't have anything productive to do with that muster. They can muster the elves one towards war. If you see that Shadow is attacking what seems to be both elven strongholds, then in my mind, it, as free people, it's nice to get the elves one away from war. So at least I get to muster once when they attack, probably. Anyway, they're moving. This is very reasonable, too. And I miss them. So three, three safe movements. And I move my armies along. I don't really have any particularly playable cards right now. If the Fellowship gets revealed, I can play Foul Thing and then maybe get Strider. That would be fun. All right. I draw Black Captain Commands. Very happy to see that. It's one of the few character cards that let you attack with a Palantir. So I'm totally happy to see that. And it lets you get Nazgul, recruit Nazgul if it's early in the game. I mean, really, anytime. But if you don't want, to, if you don't need to move the Na the Nazgul around, so I can bring the Black Captain in wherever I want to attack, and then play Black Captain Commands as a Palantir to get even more Nazgul there. So that's useful. All right, they get Power of Tom Bombadil and Dead Men of Dunharrow. Maybe useful, not incredible. I allocate an eye and roll one more. They get two movement. This is a pretty average roll. Nothing too special. They start by passing. I get Sauron to war. I'm certainly getting the musters and army movement that I need. They play Power of Tom Bombadil now. I think that makes a lot of sense. They see that an attack on the north is coming. The only slight problem with that is that now it does let me get um, the Witch King round two. So by advancing the north one towards war, I'm going to be able to move my army to northern Rovanian. 
Then with the character die attack into Dale, advancing the north one towards war from the attack and another towards war because of the capturing of the settlement. And then with my final muster die, I can bring in the Witch King. So also now I can use this Palantir right away to attack. All right, so, but maybe they can't know that. They redraw a strategy card, which is always nice using Gandalf's ability. And now I get my armies in position. They move the fellowship. I miss. I attack into Dale, exactly as I had expected. I play no card here. I have better than 50% chance of hitting a six on seven dice. And if they have scouts by now, there's really nothing that I can do about that. So I just hope to roll a six. They play Sudden Strike. I don't know that I would bother doing that here because I that one hit is not going to reduce my combat strength. And Dead Men of Dunharrow is a significant threat to, to Shadow taking over Pilar gear and holding it indefinitely. I guess they're just planning on running with the Fellowship at this point, so why not get cards out of your hand when you can? All right. They miss, and I get my six, they get a six. All right, I'm happy, very, very happy to trade one hit on uh, my army for, for getting rid of their regular and leader, which surely would have retreated into a siege. So that's good. The North is at war. They use a half an army movement to move into their regular into Old Forest Road. You know, from Old Forest Road into Woodland Realm, that is one of the possibilities of going to Old Forest Road. So that's, that's definitely not not crazy. And then they go Iron Hills to Erebor. They have Dane Ironfoot's guard, so Erebor is certainly going to be nicely defended. That seems very reasonable to me. I get the Black Captain, and interestingly, I get them in Dimrald Dale because I want to besiege Lorien in case they have power too great. And that way I can just I can just sit on Lorien as needed and besiege Woodland Realm later because power too great does not protect Woodland Realm. All right, they keep the fellowship moving along and I miss them again. All right, so they've moved five times without getting hit at all. Um, that's pretty good <laughs> for them. Um, all right, I play Black Captain Commands. And this is, this is what I was saying before about I get to use it to just get to Nazgul and an attack because I got to put the Black Captain wherever I wanted, the Witch King wherever I wanted. If I wanted them to attack, if I wanted to attack Lorien first, I put them in Dimrald Dale. If I wanted to attack Woodland Realm first, I put them in Dale. So there we go. All right. I attack Lorien. I have a full five leadership. I want to just take care of Lorien while I can. All right. I get Nazgul Search and Fighting Uruk High. And this, by the way, is the benefit of bringing the regular from North Dunland through Moria, Dimrald Dale, into Lorien. I did have Devilry of Orthanc already in my hand. And my plan is to, you know, play these Isengard-specific combat cards in Lorien and then reposition my Nazgul uh, and, and move on. The other thing is if I take out Lorien and still have a decent force, this force can continue south to Rohan later in the game. All right, so I allocate an I and I roll four more, obviously more than I wanted. And they get this beautiful roll. I mean, obviously you don't, um, sometimes you don't want to have uh, a bunch of movement against a bunch of eyes, but they've already moved five times safely and they really want to kill off Gandalf at this point. They have Athalas in hand, so I think this is really just a perfect role for free people at this point in the game. You know, if they had, it would be nice to see Celeborn's Galadriel. It would be nice to see Thrandall's Archers, but in terms of the action dice roll, they're they're good. And Dane, I think, could easily help in Erebor. All right, so I guess they're considering the possibility of separating with one of these dice instead of moving. But what? Oh, could they? Oh, wow. They could get, because they have Mirror of Galadriel, they could get both Strider, or both Aragorn and Gandalf crown this turn, I think. So if they move once, kill off Gandalf, separate, 
bring Strider to no, not enough dice. All right, never mind. They can't do that. Uh, all right, so they're just gonna. I mean, I think they just have to move, right? All right, so they ask, "Does Gondor need a king?" All right, I think they move the fellowship and see what happens. All right, so I hit them twice. I get a one reveal. All right, so not pleasant to be revealed, but they're doing fine on corruption. They can just take this, anticipating that they're going to hide and move a second time this turn. It's it's pretty likely that they can they can take this. So they do take the one corruption. They move through Moria. They're in Eastham Net, and then an eye. Okay, so Gandalf doesn't die. They it, because they have all these character dice. It's probably fine. So they really just have not taken a lot of corruption. Um, I attack into Dale. So my plan is I just have to move along militarily as fast as I can. I attack from Dale into Woodland Realm. And the reason is I definitely want to take Lorien out. But I need to besiege Woodland Realm first before I put the elves all the way to war. Otherwise, they can muster normally in, in Woodland Realm. I don't think that... They would be doing that this turn, given their dice roll, but still, there's no there's no reason to allow that. I don't leave anybody behind in Dale because I anticipate remaneuvering this Woodland Realm army into Erebor eventually. So that's why I'm just bringing them all. M maybe it's a mistake. Maybe I could leave one, but... All right. They hide the Fellowship, and I play Fighting Urkai. One possibility um, was to play... Foul thing from the deep there instead. I could, I could have played foul thing from the deep. And then if I get a reveal, one of these four tiles, and not draw Gandalf, then they could potentially not kill off Gandalf this round, <laughs> which would be pretty funny. Um, it didn't seem worth it to me because... First of all, my chances of revealing are relatively low. I have a very productive um, card card to play. Uh, I mean, a productive attack to make here with this with this Palantir fighting Urkai. I want to take out um, I want to take out Lorien as soon as I can. And um, there's a chance that even when they move, they're going to get these two tiles, which doesn't let them kill off Gandalf. Also, so it didn't it didn't seem worth it to me. All right, so I play Fighting Urkai. I'm going to try and take out Lorien. I'm also going to try and cycle into cards that um, are playable elsewhere with, like, I'm going to get rid of Devilry of Orthanc. So, all right, here we go. Yeah, Devilry of Orthanc. I get three hit, four hits. Okay, so, you know, obviously that's very nice for me. I'm happy to have this battle very decisive uh and having the leftover army is very useful the odds of winning this battle are very high anyway because of fighting urukai and i can play cards like desperate battle also so all right but yeah obviously it would be nice if uh for free people if they inflicted more casualties uh and they did get three right there so that is that is above average for them also i go ahead and lose the isengard regular because maybe i want to muster it elsewhere and i don't need to play it anymore now. It also protects me against uh, Spirit of Mordor. Um, all right, I redraw Great Host. I could play it here, but I have two more rounds for free from, I have this round and next round for free from Fighting Urkai. So I'm inclined to just save that Great Host for a, a battle later. It's not like my hand size is too big, so I'll just save it. I'm going to roll a six on 20 dice. So I don't play a card. They don't play a card and I roll a six. All right. So yes, Great Host would have guaranteed it, but 20 dice also. All right. So that's it. The elves got four hits and this army is not quite as big as I had wanted it to be. It can still do something, but it's not gigantic. All right. They move again. Obviously, they're going to get hit again. They get That's that's three, three hits. So if I draw an eye, but at this point, they're probably totally fine if I get an eye because Gandalf. All right, but a two. They're happy to lose Gandalf to a two. They stay hidden. This was pretty excellent turn for free people. And um, I, okay, Elves are at War. I play Nazgul Search. All right, so this is just a slight efficiency. I don't need to reveal the Fellowship here, but I'm going to reposition my Nazgul anyway from Lorien to Woodland Realm to be able to continue the attack um 
And I'm, I'm assuming I'm going to use this ring to turn this muster into an attack, though maybe not. Maybe I'll just muster the Southrons and Easterlings towards war because I need them at war anyway, so I might as well save the ring. Um, and if I roll too many musters next turn, I can I can use the muster then. And that way I also wait to draw more cards. So so I would I would anticipate I'm not actually attacking with this muster uh, with a ring. I'm just going to muster Southrons and Easterlings. But either way, I need to reposition Nazgul. And there's a chance that even with Strider... They're not going to be able to get in next round because they have to move. They would have to move three times and they will also have to hide once. So depending on the number of times they get revealed on the first two moves, plus possibly foul thing from the deep, I might be able to stall them from Mordor. And getting to Mordor on turn four, I mean, my military is doing reasonably well, but getting to Mordor turn four is uh, a really fast for the fellowship, so... All right, so I move Nazgul around. I I get a full, uh, no, I, I'm happy with five leadership in Woodland Realm. I want one extra leadership in South Rune because I anticipate moving, uh, merging this army into uh, the South Rune army into Erebor. That's my plan because um, I'm just hoping I'm going to take out Woodland Realm relatively efficiently. I have some good combat cards. That seems reasonably likely as long as they don't draw Thranduils. All right. So Nazgul's search happens. They get revealed. They obviously get Gandalf and Fangorn. And now, yep, I muster the Southrons and Easterlings towards war. I do want to attack Woodland Realm as soon as possible, but I'm willing to risk Thranduils in exchange for saving my ring for something that is a really useless die where this is actually a useful die at the moment as a muster. Okay, they now have five dice, I have nine dice, and I draw Isildur's Bane and Rage of the Dunlendings. I'm actually pretty happy to see Isildur's Bane. Obviously, Cruel Weather would have been the perfect draw, but Isildur's Bane isn't bad because there are four tiles left that can reveal them. So depending on, you know, my pulls and my draws, and we'll see. All right, they uh, get rid of uh, Path of the Woeses, and they have plenty of healing here, so they can just they can just move as fast as they can. They allocate an eye. I allocate an eye, and I roll three more. Okay, so not really what I want to see, because but it might it might be it might be okay because as long as I can hit the fellowship and reveal them and all of that. So, all right, so they um, get two movement, which is what they which is what they need, at least in combination with uh, spending a ring. They could get to Mordor this turn. We'll see what they try. Um, they start by hiding, and I'm relieved to see that because I think if they had Thranduils, they probably would have played Thranduils first because otherwise it's quite reasonable that I would be attacking here. I start here... Interesting. It looks like with that Palantir, I'm planning on playing a card. Um, I guess I just want to have the most chances of playing both Foul Thing and Isildur's Bane. And it gives me a chance to get information about how that randomness is going to go. So for instance, if I reveal and happen to pull a Strider, then, you know, that's good. All right. So I play Foul Thing and I get a zero. I'm happy to reveal them. That's that's very good. Really, anything other than an eye is fine, and a reveal is um, is quite good. Obviously, a damaging tile would have been better, and then I would have had a chance to get a strider, but still, that's a, that's a totally nice draw for me. Happy to reveal them. They have to hide again. So now what that means is they have to move twice without getting revealed, plus an extra tile draw from Isildur's. So I think with that draw, their odds of making it to Mordor are quite a bit lower. My chances of revealing them on the first move is like hitting them is something like 50% on sixes plus 25% plus 50% to reveal. So something like 25% chance to reveal them on the first move. And then on the next move, I don't know, quite high chances to hit them, probably like 40%. So... Plus, I get to draw an extra tile and maybe hit one of these three with Isildurs. So I'm feeling like relatively low chances at this point, given that information, that they're going to make it to Mordor this round. 
All right, I start by attacking into Woodland Realm. In case I manage to defeat it with this single attack, I am saving my army movement for um, more efficient movement. That's my plan. All right, so I play a strategy card. I'm guessing Desperate Battle. I want to save Rage of the Dunlendings in, in case I want to go after all four cities. Rage of the Dunlendings is a pretty efficient way of getting the Shire. The Power of Tom Bombadil is in play, so maybe I'm not going to do that. Still, Relentless Assault is a perfectly good combat effect, and it can be good to ca counter Gandalf if Gandalf goes into some stronghold somewhere. All right, so I played Great Host. Yeah, that's, that's reasonable also. Um, almost certainly going to create an automatic hit. All right, so I get one hit. They get three hits back. So the elves can definitely fight this game. And the elves have never missed. But I got one hit plus an extra hit from uh, Great Host. I decide not to press because I want to preserve this army. And I think that I have enough um, time to spend an extra attack on it, and because I haven't drawn Corsairs of Umbar yet, I'm happy to get to cycle a card, another strategy card again, trying to get deeper into the strategy deck and increases my chances of drawing Corsairs. All right, so Shadows Gather, I'm very happy to see that. That's going to efficiently let me move, uh, merge up this army in Southrune to um, my army in Wooden Realm later. So also, depending on what I roll, maybe I'm going to save this as a combat effect to try and take out Erebor. So all right, they move the Fellowship. I'm obviously hoping to hit them here, and I do hit them. 50% chance to reveal, but not revealed. Okay, so they moved once. Now I just continue my attack in Woodland Realm. I go ahead and play a strategy card. I'm guessing this is Desperate Battle. Yeah, Desperate Battle. They play Heroic Death here. I think that makes sense. Uh, they have too many cards in their hand. They could stall me. Um... I do also like Advantageous Position just because Heroic Death is a very powerful defensive card. And if you get, for instance, Gandalf into any stronghold in the end of the game, that can that can really turn the tide. I would have been slightly inclined to play Advantageous Position against a strategy card anyway. Um, okay, so because if it was something like Onslaught or... Um, great host again or anything like that the the heroic death doesn't really help as much anyway um i get four hits so oh the elves failed to do maximum hit points that oh no 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 that was the northern unit <laughs> okay the northern unit is the one that missed the elves continue to hit every single time uh so literally every every hit the elves have hit every chance the elves have had to hit they have hit um and and you know they're happy to whittle down that army is that enough i think that might be enough Given that they have Dane, this is going to be hard for me to take out Erebor now. Um, okay, so I redrew a strategy card. Okay, Onslaught can be useful. I'm probably not going to end up playing Orcs Multiplying again. Um, but the Onslaught can be an efficient way of finishing off a battle with a lot of regulars. All right, they move again. I would really like to hit them here. I do hit them, but I don't reveal them. All right, so they have now managed to move twice, got hit twice against four eyes, which is fair, but did not get revealed. And now they have a good chance, uh, a good chance of making it to, unless I do something right now, they make it to Mordor. So um, they just take the three corruption. I think that makes total sense. They don't really want to risk losing uh, Strider to... Othalos, that's, I mean, Strider 2, 3, Corruption. That said, maybe I would do it. I mean, I guess if I have Cruel Weather, which I certainly could, um, then you really want to keep Strider in the Fellowship. So, and with Bilbo's Song, it's just it's just not that big of an issue. So, yeah, I, th I think that's right. But better just keep Strider in. You have Othalos in hand. All right, I play Isildur's Bane here because I would really like to draw one of these three tiles. I have a now at this point only a 30% chance of stalling them. I think overall in this turn, what was my chance of stalling them? I got a little lucky on foul thing. So yeah, I don't I don't know what the overall chances were of them making it into Mordor. Starting in Druid and Forest and I have two tile drawing cards. All right. Um but I do not manage to stall them. 
they are now up to six corruption, but Isildur's Bane has been played, so they're just not at that much risk. And um, then, they, of course, they use a ring to move. I'm going to hit them for sure. Uh, I mean, not for sure, but uh, four dice, 50% on each die. One out of 16. Yeah, only one out of 16 to avoid that hit. So um, five out of 16 chances to hit them. And now they're probably going to get revealed, but they don't even get revealed here. Oh my gosh. Wow. So that would have been a lot of extra corruption if they, not a lot, but certainly some amount of extra corruption, some amount of expected corruption if they got hit there, if they got revealed there, but they didn't get revealed. They, um, they're going to take a random now that they know they're making it to Mordor. Obviously, they would rather not lose Strider, but they also don't want to go into Mordor with eight corruption and six companions. That's <clears throat> that's pretty risky. So um, I do get Strider. So, you know, what would... Are you happy overall with this turn as free people or are you sad? I don't know. Losing Strider there is is pretty unpleasant. You pushed really hard to make it to Mordor. You only have one ring left, and now you're at six corruption and Athelos is less effective. You're still effectively, if you figure one healing from Athelos, one healing from Bilbo's song, you're at f effectively four corruption, and you have eight healing, eight um, corruption uh defense in the fellowship left so you're entering at negative four you're a little slow if you get revealed a bunch and because because i did not i just drew three tiles in a row four yeah three tiles in a row no four tiles in a row i just drew four tiles in a row that were not reveals there are going to be quite a few reveals in the pool so as they move through, literally only two tiles do not reveal them in the hunt pool as they move through Mordor. And they don't have Gollum's Guide. So this two, one, and zero will reveal them for quite some time. All right. So obviously bad luck to um, lose Strider there. Good luck for me. Overall, I think I would have still preferred to just stall them a whole turn, let them keep Strider, but keep them out of Mordor for a whole round. I probably would have preferred that. Um but still, if they were going to make it to Mordor and be hidden, I'm happy to be for Strider to be gone. And now I think to myself, probably it's going to take them three turns. Three turns to get through Mordor. Maybe even four, because they've used up two rings already. All right, let's see what happens. So I move my armies around. I leave one regular in Woodland Realm just in case my opponent gets ideas with mustering up in Carrick. I'm going to likely muster a little in South Rune if I get some musters next round. Hopefully I get South Rounds and Easterlings to war, Mouth of Sauron in play, muster once in South Rune, and then probably Shadows Gather. But depending on what I roll, maybe I'll just move them in the hard way and save Shadows Gather as a combat card. All right, let's move on. They make it to Mordor turn four, or start of turn five. That's very fast. They get Gua here. All right, so this is a this is exactly the sort of situation that Gandalf can get into some, you know, some stronghold at the end of the game, either um, Helm's Deep. They can't, Gandalf can't quite make it to Dol Amroth. So I'm still hoping to draw um, Cirdan's, uh, or um, Corsairs of Umbar. All right, let's see what I roll. So the Hunt Pool is pretty unpleasant. Interesting idea here, maybe... Maybe I allocate a bunch of eyes because the fellowship is hidden right now. They're going to have to move at least once. And I have a, what, 44% chance of drawing an eye on their first move. And if I have like four or five eyes in there, they go up to nine corruption on their first move. Yeah, I might try that. I might do four eyes here. I do want my military to keep going, but if the fellowship just, if I roll like, if I have like one eye in there, this hunt pool is just not very threatening to them. But if I have four eyes, this is a horrible hunt pool. If these are all four or five reveal. All right, I bet I'm, I bet I'm allocating a bunch of eyes. 
Yeah. Okay. So I allocated four eyes. My maximum was five. And I think I probably just allocate four. I do have Dol Golder and Moria exposed. So um, I do, I'm thinking to myself, okay, Orcs multiplying again, I might play for the card effect because uh, it's certainly possible that they could muster up units in Carrick and then try and head down there if I get some crazy roll, like just Palantirs or just army movements. So I also still have rings. So I'm, I'm probably okay, but I kind of want to make sure I get the Mouth of Sauron. I want to make sure I keep moving pretty steadily anyway with my military. I can't completely let off the gas on military because they might not hit an eye. All right, so four is good. Maybe I'll roll one more. Maybe I'll roll zero. <laughs> that's that's hilarious. My That's exactly what my past self said. Okay, so four eyes. Um, I roll no more. I um, And they get some nice movement, flexible stuff. I'm happy to get the Mouth of Sauron and um, and then get the South Rounds and Easterlings towards war. All right, here we go. I'm probably going to end up using a ring to turn one of these Palantirs into a muster, I'm thinking, because I can then use this other Palantir productively to play Shadows Gather. So one muster to get the Mouth of Sauron, one muster to get the South Rounds and Easterlings towards war, one ring turning a Palantir into a muster to get another regular unit in South Rune. I mean, elite unit in South Rune. And then, or I could turn it, another thing I could do is I could just turn it into an army. That would probably be fine too. And then move, merge up in East Rune. All right, let's see what happens. All right, they start by thinking. They start by playing Athelos. Sure, why not play it? It's fine. They need to use a Will of the West anyway. And they're not in a huge rush because the South Rounds and Easterlings aren't to war yet, but still. All right, let's see what happens. They um, note that they were sad that Strider died with Athalos in hand. Yes, that is a sad thing. And they roll no, uh, no healing. They should expect to get one and they get none. Uh, it is taunting them. The game is taunting them a little bit because if Strider were guide, they would have healed two with those threes and fours. All right. Uh, I muster the South Ron Zinis. I'm thinking. Yeah, I muster the South Ron Zinis Drillings to war. That makes sense. They use their uh, next Will of the West to move, and it's an eye. All right. So they take two corruption here. They move like they lose Legolas. It's not great. It's not great. It's not like super dire, but if they hit another eye, that will obviously be bad because I'm probably going to allocate four eyes again next round. And there's still a, you know, what is that? 42% chance. Uh, no, 37% uh, chance that they're going to hit an eye next round. So yeah. All right. I get the mouth of Sauron. Uh, the Fellowship hides. That's interesting. I I might have maybe been tempted to not hide the Fellowship. I mean, you don't want to take corruption damage from like Morgul Wound or something like that. But at the same time, it's nice potentially to have the option to just hide next round if there are a bunch of eyes. And you can instead use your time to shore up your defenses. I don't know what they can do with that. Oh, with that character card, yeah, they could play Bilbo Song and heal one. Um, if they had saved their Will of the West instead of using it to move, if they had moved with their character card, character die, they could risk Day Without Dawn losing one die. Okay, not the end of the world. Um, and then they could have drawn a character card with that Will of the West and stayed revealed. I don't know. How how much do they really have to rush? I feel like if I'm allocating four eyes, my military is seriously slowing down. I am at five victory points, but they know that, that they have Dane Ironfoot's guard, so there's a decent chance that Erebor can hold. Um, and then even after that, I still need to get three more victory points. So I think they have some time. All right, I do exactly what I had predicted, mustering an elite in South Rune. 
and then they muster Gondor towards war, I think that's very smart because that way if I do have Corsairs of Umbar, they can hopefully muster in advance of it. I play Shadows Gather, and now I have a decent army in Dale. This has certainly has chances of taking out Erebor, even with Dane, um, but it'll be close. So I, by moving through Iron Hills, I capture it. You can't normally, you can't make any attacks with Shadows Gather, but it does count as a free region. Iron Hills is a free region because there are no armies there. I get to move through it and, get, and capture it. So I do advance the dwarves one towards war, but I'm happy to have that. Um, captured to avoid any shenanigans once dwarves are at war. They played Dane Ironfoot's Guard here. <clears throat> okay. I might have been slightly tempted to must... No, no, no. That, that's good. That, that's a good play. I was saying I might have been tempted to muster Gondor towards war with the muster die, but at the start of next turn, if they roll a bunch of Wills of the West... They're going to have to spend them right away, and they would rather be able to spend them on the Fellowship stuff instead of um, having to muster with Dane. So better to get Dane. Clearly, I'm going to attack Erebor anyway. So, um, you know, that's right. All right. So I attack into Erebor, and I'm hoping. So now I have 12 hit points against 8 hit points in the Stronghold. So definitely a close battle. They have two leadership, you know... It's going to be close. They have no quarter, two different no quarters. You know, and this is where the, the heroic death could make a difference between eight hit points and nine hit points. Who knows? Um, it's close. I mean, they have good combat cards to play either way. I get Morgul Wound. Happy to see that. Um, if they get revealed, like I'm probably going to allocate four eyes again. Yeah. So I allocate four eyes. And now if I roll one more... I'll have five eyes in there, and then if they get revealed with an eye, I win the game with Morgul Wound. That's a pleasant win. All right, so I do roll one more eye. That's nice. And they roll a bunch of character dice. So, you know, what are they going to do? They're going to have to move. And this could be a situation where, as free people, you can... <clears throat> I mean, obviously they didn't roll any Palantirs, so that's unlucky. But had they, you know, rolled some Palantirs, they might have been able to, um, you know, heal themselves in some way. Uh, they have Horn of Gondor, so that's good. All right, so Horn of Gondor played in Mordor. It's pretty cool. You don't often have Bormir in the Fellowship all the way um, and then be able to play Horn of Gondor. That's pretty cool. All right, so they're happy to see that. Uh, I attack into Erebor because I want to keep making progress I play I don't know what I'm gonna play maybe I could have played we come to kill I mean I could have played put the the orc into the or the uh, the, the Sauron elite unit I could have put that into Erebor first but I guess I'm excited to play I don't know what I'm excited to play with this palantir All right. I start by cycling character cards. Interesting. I guess I want to get red tiles. I mean, I'm putting, I'm, I'm switching to a corruption game, I guess is what's happening. So I get three hits, obviously a very good start. They get four hits against me. So I'm probably okay with that trade. I'm just, I'm slowing down. I get Shelob's Lair. Okay. So basically, I've switched to a corruption game. I didn't think that I could take out Erebor. I'm going to muster more in South Rune, bring these armies in, reinforce. I have eight hit points to their five. I'm just, I'm, I'm just taking it slow. Maybe I'm going to play Ulakai and try and take it out. I mean, that's possible. All right. They move and I get an eye. All right, so they have to take two, they lose Horn of Gondor, they lose Boromir, they take two Corruption and are revealed. I obviously play Morgul Wound. Yeah, and so this is the, this is the cost of having pulled so many tiles, when you push the fellowship really fast, there are just fewer tiles in the hunt pool, which makes 
the eyes more potent. And then I got, I did get lucky, you know, like 20% chance of getting two eyes in a row. Um, but honestly, even if I had gotten at least one non-eye, that like there's, there's still going to be some trouble for them. All right. So they're at 11 corruption now. They hide the fellowship, obviously now. I play Shelob's Lair. And the fact that I have played Shelob's Lair now means that they know I don't have any character cards, which is significant because there are relatively few cards left in the character deck that damage the fellowship. So... Um, I, whoa, I am plus six on sixes. Wow. That is good. Um, all right. So let's see what happens. Uh, I go ahead and put Shelob into the pool and they now muster Gondor towards war. I play Ulug High. All right. So my thinking is let's take another shot at Erebor. I have a chance of taking it out. I do have deadly strife. I do have orcs multiplying again for onslaught. Like I have chances. All right, so they muster into Dol Amroth. I attack in Erebor. I play Deadly Strife. They play their advantageous position now. Makes sense. I'm not sure that it's going to be enough. I get four hits, uh, five hits. Yeah, so Erebor falls. They get four back against me, but that doesn't really matter. And I have now up to seven. So this is interesting. I redrew... Hill Trolls. I redrew Hill Trolls. And I got Breaking of the Fellowship. So there was Breaking of the Fellowship, there was Lure of the Ring, and there was Candles of Corpses. So how many eyes am I going to allocate? I'm going to allocate three eyes again. Yes, there are only two eyes left in the pool, but there's a big difference between those being like very damaging and those being one reveal. So I want to keep the I want to keep the pressure on. Um they do have Bilbo Song. They do have Elven Cloak. So, all right. I roll only one um, character die. And that's significant because what I want to do is, you know, potentially reposition the Witch King and then start attacking. It's it's probably fine. That's probably what I need. I, I, I mean, I already drew Breaking the Fellowship. So if they get revealed at this point without healing first, um, like if... And I rolled one eye. So if I draw another eye, which to be fair, not super high odds, but 25% chance, I know that I win the game guaranteed because of breaking. All right. They start by... Interesting. I'm a little surprised by that. Um, I can understand wanting to save Bilbo's song, but... What are the odds that I drew a red tile? Like some, but you can put a blue tile in. Like you can put a blue tile in guaranteed and there's only a chance that I drew a red tile. And if I did happen to draw the damaging tile um, or the damaging card like uh, Candles of Corpses or um, Lord of the Ring or Breaking of the Fellowship, then you're more likely to survive this. I guess they're hoping to... I don't know exactly what they're hoping for. Like, I guess the zero reveal would be fine. All right. Um, so, yeah, that's a little risky. I guess they're just... I guess, I guess they're hoping that I don't have anything at all. Okay, here's the thing. If you're hoping that they don't have anything at all, why not go a little slower with the fellowship and draw another character card first? Because am I getting to am I really getting to 10 victory points this round? I don't I don't see that. Like I I guess the risk is I can attack into Helm's Deep. I can just muster 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 and then you have to use your last ring to move into Helm's Deep. I probably would have drawn a character card first. Like, it's definitely a dire situation either way for the Fellowship, but I don't think... I think you could have slightly increased the odds. Maybe. All right, anyway. They move. I do get an eye. So those three eyes in a row. 
and um, they lose everybody from the fellowship, and then I win the game with breaking of the fellowship. So, um, oh, that's ironic. I used their palantir to play it. <laughs> that's rude of me. I'm sure I did not do that on purpose. Uh, I did have a character die to play that card with. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. That was not that was not intentional. Um, I just saw a palantir and was, knew I was playing a card. Anyway, um, so did they? How unlucky did they get a Mordor? I yeah, it was a little unlucky. Um, to get all those eyes, but the pool was stacked with eyes. Um, I guess I guess the key thing is if they had hit a three or anything, any of these lower ones earlier on, they could have gotten rid of Legolas and I wouldn't have been able to, I wouldn't have been able, yeah. Yeah, okay. So I, I wouldn't have been able to allocate as many eyes. All right. Anyway, this, this game was certainly... Uh, quite a bit in my favor. Um, here's some statistics. Plus, 20, plus 7 on 6s. Um, that's a lot of 6s. That's a lot of extra 6s. So this was a turn 7 military victory. Uh, no, it was a turn 7 corruption victory. So I did switch. I switched to corruption when the Fellowship made it to Mordor because they pushed so hard to get their turn 4. But I don't think it was wrong of free people to push when they had the fellowship that they did uh it just went it just went downhill pretty fast with a bunch of eyes in mordor so that is the risk of making it to mordor with a relatively high corruption track and um a full fellowship having pulled a bunch of non-eye tiles from the pool pre-mordor all right good game thanks for watching uh we will be back for more have a good rest of the day